Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The boarding will be in a few moments. Awesome, we are cleared for takeoff. Let's acknowledge that and start pulling forward. We look both ways to make sure there are no planes coming. Start turning us right here, get lined up with the runway. Gonna close out of that ATC window again. There we are, nice and lined up with the runway. Takeoff checklist. When lined up, horizon, we wanna check that. Heading, uh, we wanna make sure that's all checked. It's a lot of checking. We're gonna go ahead and turn our taxi light off. Nav lights are coming on, strobe is coming on, put on our pulse system as well. Cast display, we wanna check that, make sure there's nothing on. There is nothing on, so we are ready for takeoff. Brakes release, and then it's all afloat. For the takeoff. Keep monitoring our engine instruments. We don't want our RPM to go too high. Don't want to turn to the right either. Speed. Rotate, rotate, there we go, and we are off. Positive rate of climb right there, so we're going to go ahead and put our landing gear up, which I just did right there. Also, we'll put our flaps up, and we will keep climbing. Next, I'm going to turn on autopilot, which is right there, and we're going to turn on our heading, hold. Try to fly heading that we need. All right, we'll contact departure. You can see that autopilot has it. We're leveling out and we're following 178. Tune to Fargo departure now. Vertical speed, we want this to be a little higher, so we're going to turn that up. Now we're going to try to climb up to 6,000 feet at a higher VSI. 309. We'll acknowledge that clearance. One nine or zero, so we're going to intercept our GPS course and then we'll maintain. We're still climbing to 6,000 feet. What I did right here is I turned on vertical speed, so now we're going to be climbing at 1,400 feet a minute. We're basically on our GPS course now, so what I can do is hit nav and we are going to start flying by GPS. Got a little bit of turbulence, so the passengers are all full of fright, but you know, it is what it is. See, we're turning right, and that's to intercept this GPS course right here. We're maintaining our own navigation. Also, if I look down at my multifunction display, you'll see this leg right here is pink. The next one is white. This are white, excuse me. This one is pink because this is our active leg right now. Once we get closer to the Fargo VOR, this will turn pink, and you'll see the aircraft start to turn, and that's because we'll be intercepting that as the active leg for our flight. Just making sure the altimeter setting is correct and we can look out the window and just kind of get a nice view of Fargo as we depart. Got the Red River down there, which actually is a river that flows north. <laughs> and here in North Dakota, we are high enough where our rivers flow north up into Canada as opposed to fl flowing south and meeting up in like the Gulf of Mexico or something like that. Fun little fact if you did not know that. Done a lot of fishing in there. It's good catfishing in there. If you like catfishing, that is the river to be in. 
looking around, uh, weather seems pretty clear aside from the turbulence that we're encountering right now, but it is what it is. Got some clouds over to the west, uh, which is where we're going to be, or to the east, excuse me, where we're going to be flying. Might pass through some of them, but it looks like for the most part, once we keep climbing, we will get above all of them. We're also about three or 700 feet away from our 6,000 foot, so... Um, I can expect that they're going to give us to climb to a higher altitude very shortly. I don't know why the passengers are so scared by turbulence. Here we go. We'll acknowledge that quick. Also, you can see we're starting to turn. That's because this is now our new active leg. Oh, excuse me, burp. Active leg in our waypoint or in our uh, flight, so we're going to turn to intercept that. In typical Carinato fashion, most likely we are going to just overshoot the CDI, the course deflection indicator, but actually it doesn't look like it's going to be too that, or that bad. So let's go ahead and go here, and we need to turn this to 180. Also, I'm going to turn on this VS again for vertical speed, and we're going to make sure that we climb at a nice vertical speed. We're going to do about 1,500 feet a minute. And it's on 1,500 feet a minute. <clears throat> Winds are getting a little stronger. We got a nice tailwind pushing us, though, 17 knots. Hopefully, it'll get a little stronger as we keep on flying so we can make up some time. With that, we're going to clear off the rest of our checklist, go into the climb checklist, power lever, adjusted climb speed as required, which we have, ECS panel, cabin pressure control. We want to make sure that we're uh, having our pressure go up with us. So that is actually right here, and you can see that we're at 2,900 feet. There's a 1.8 pounds per square inch differential, but that'll keep on climbing up to our 7,000 feet that we have set. Fuel tank gauges are correct and checked. Uh, so we got 143 and 149, 143, 149. And if we look down, we are still on the left tank. So we should expect to see that go to the right tank fairly soon. DI system as required. So we're going to look outside. If we have any clouds coming up, we're going to make sure that we turn on some of our DI system just to make sure this is in auto, which it is. Uh, so that way we should keep on having our fuel tank switch. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, and if this left tank keeps on dropping and it's not switching, we start to get an imbalance, and I'm going to manually take over and flip that to the right tank. And that is it for our climb checklist. Next is going to be our cruise checklist, and we'll be able to do that shortly. Well, not shortly. We've still got about 10,000 feet to climb, and then we're going to have about another 6,000 feet or 7,000 feet to climb to get up to flight level 250. Still getting some of this bump, but hopefully as we get higher away from these cloud levels, uh, we'll get out of some of that chop and we'll have some nice clean air above us. Looking down... You can see that we are already pretty much flying higher than uh, we normally flew in most of our videos uh, with the general aviation aircraft. They can get up to 10,000 feet. Uh, the highest I have personally flown in general aviation aircraft, I want to say is 12, maybe uh, maybe 11,000 feet. That was off in uh, Colorado where I was flying. Uh, there were some mountains around there, uh, and the elevation was like 6,000 feet to begin with, so uh, it was, <laughs> you just had to get higher. Passing 10,000 feet, so I'm going to turn off the landing lights, and then we're also going to acknowledge our handoff. Thank you for that co-pilot who sounded British. I love, I love British people, or at least their accent, or, or Australians. I wish I had a cool accent, but unfortunately I don't. Speaking of British people, um, I want to all direct you to one of my friends, Darren Kent. He has a YouTube page as well where he does some uh, flying, and his flights are some of the most relaxing flights that you will ever watch. So if you want to see some flying in England or uh, the UK and hear a cool accent because he's got a pretty sweet accent and just see some good also uh, flying from another YouTuber. Check out my friend Darren Kent. I'll uh, list his uh, 
information in the comment, not the comment section, but the information section below this video. So go ahead and check that out. Also, they have uh, contact with us, 3039 still, so we'll go ahead and check that and we're still at 3039. Now, one thing that you don't wanna forget when you're flying high is once we pass 18,000 feet, which is the transition into class alpha airspace, you need to be set in that at 29 or nine or two. So they don't necessarily tell you to do that. That's just something that you have to know to do. So once we get past 180 to 250 or we're climbing into 250, we're gonna make sure that we transition to 29 or nine or two for our barometer. or barometric pressure, I should say. Looking down, we got a nice little town right here. Not a whole lot of clouds, and we can start to see all the many lakes of Minnesota. The land of 10,000 lakes. And also, if you're wondering why we're not just flying direct to Omaha via uh, GPS and we're doing these jet routes, it's because basically I wanted to. It sounded like a, something a little more fun. It adds more time to the flight, but it is it is just fun to kind of follow the chart sometimes. And a lot of times you're not gonna necessarily always get granted um, direct to GPS clearance. So um, even if you request an IFR flight, you might be following jet routes as well. And so what I tried to do is plan following some of the routes. Uh, so that way I tried to keep it as realistic as possible once again. Left tank is at 139, we're at 149, and we are still on there. Oh, it just changed for us, awesome. So after 10 pounds, it changed. So you could see that happen. So the auto is working, and we should start pulling from the right tank and seeing that go down. Also, I'm just gonna keep checking my engine gauges and everything like that. Make sure that everything is in the green. Another thing I can do is take our flaps to up to the 850 mode, which basically gives us the full 850 horsepower of this engine. Uh, there is a checklist in order to do that. If I pull it over here, you can see that you wanna make your flaps checked up, propeller RPM 2000. You don't want your power level lever to be above 100% torque. Uh, flap control lever, then you'd switch it up to 850 and then power lever as required to maintain less than 121% on your torque. Uh, the reason you're doing that is you don't want to overspeed the engine. So that is something that we will do uh, fairly shortly. We could actually go ahead and do that now. So we see that our torque is at 100% and our prop control is at 2000. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little more power. I'm going to push that up. And now we're gonna see our torque start to rise. So I gotta pull back my power lever some so I don't go in to that 121. You see, I did it a little too much um, and it's not quite linear. If I push it up, it doesn't automatically jump. It's gotta spool up to the level that I commanded. So you kinda wanna play with it, finesse it a little bit. But as you can see by doing this, we're getting a little more airspeed while maintaining our climb. Push it up. I'm going to try to get to 119 or so. I just want to make sure I'm not over speeding our engine. Come down to the multifunctional display. I'm going to zoom out our range a little bit. Oh, that zoom in. And you can see that we've got a long way to go. Before we hit our first leg is way down here. So we've got a lot of flying to do. I'm gonna keep on climbing. I'll probably keep you guys all the way through the climb up to 250. And then after that, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is uh, cut the video, let you guys see some, see some scenery and things like that. So now we got our climb to 250, which is gonna be our cruising altitude. And we are gonna go boom. 250. Also, he said we're reaching our transition altitude, which is 18. So we're going to come down here and go to 29 or 9 or 2. And we're going to make sure our VS speed is set. That's going to climb up. 
Now, it was still set, but we were still not climbing that fast, uh, so I just put it up one and then down, and now we're back to getting our good VSI. Vertical speed. And you can see when we change that to 299 or 2, how our altitude actually decreased below 180, and that's because of the lower pressure that was indicated. So, that's why you everybody is staying at that same place. But just be wary that if it is a lower pressure, you might be flying at, you know, 19, 190, but actually be below, be below 180, which could be into VFR territory. So that's just one thing you got to kind of kind of be cognizant about. But the whole reason they set it to 29 or 9 or 2 is because you're going to be changing barometric pressures a lot. You're going to be flying high and faster, and it's a good way to make sure that everybody is on the same altimeter setting so that you are deconflicted. So you don't think you're at one altitude where another person is at another altitude, and you're actually at the same altitude, if that makes sense. So that's why they have you switch to 29 or 9 or 2. Got some lovely views out our wing. Hope everybody is enjoying this flight so far. In our IFR flight, the Cicada TBM850, I'm pretty excited about doing this flight. Uh, you know, I, 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 I love flying that general aviation aircraft as well, flying low, but there is something that is just kind of cool about flying high, flying a little faster, and using instruments to basically do all your navigation and everything like that. While we were using instruments during our VFR flights, I, I do understand that, but we were still predominantly VFR, so we still had to use ground references and things like that. This is all off our instruments. We can still use ground references if we want. It's only good pilotage to try to get as much information as you can. So not only use your instruments, but since we can see the ground, we can supplement that information with what we're seeing on the ground. We've got about 4,000 more feet to go before we start to level out. One nice thing about this autopilot, if you've been noticing, is it turned for us. We're following our course nicely, and it did our climb, and it will start to level out for us. This is another reason why this TBM 850 Cicada is such a good plane if you're trying to transition into something a little bigger. It's got the all-glass cockpit. There's not nearly as many buttons and gizmos that you have to try to learn, say, as if you were to jump into maybe like the Beechcraft C-90 uh, or the B-200 or something like that. Uh, that has a lot more steam gauges, a lot more analog. There is autopilot associated with it, but it's not quite as simplistic as the one that we are using right now. So if you are used to flying those smaller general aviation aircraft and you want to fly a bigger aircraft like this, or at least one where you can go into these higher altitudes, this is a great transition aircraft. I think later on I am going to try to get a full cold and dark startup tutorial for this aircraft. Even though if you're watching this video, I went through all the checklists, so you kind of got the full startup, but I'll go more in-depth, if you will, on what some of uh, the steps are being used for. 2,500 feet until we reach our cruising altitude of 250. At that point, I'll probably, if we're in clean air, turn off the seatbelt sign, and then, you know, I'm going to make you uh, have to watch some scenery because I don't want you guys to be bored forever by looking, uh, you know, just at this long flight. This is about a two-hour flight, so obviously I got to break it some. Plus, I need to go to the bathroom with, and probably watch some TV or something like that. It's one of the nice things about flying a flight simulator is during the flight, as long as I can still hear ATC and get changed to frequencies when I need to, I can quick run to the bathroom, fix myself a snack, or fix myself a drink, or something like that. So, I'm probably going to do all of those things here shortly. You can see that we got about 1,000 feet to go until we're at flight level 250. Once we hit about 245, we'll start to see the aircraft probably start to lower this VVI uh, and then start to level off at 250. Also, then we'll start to see our indicated airspeed start to increase. Also, if you look, we got a nice tailwind right here of 52 knots. So our, even though we're showing 158 knots indicated, our true airspeed is 225, but our ground speed is almost 50 knots more than that because of this tail speed tailwind so you can see that our ground speed is actually 278 right oh excuse me hiccups 278 
Also, you can see that that VVI was starting to dip or starting to level out at 250. The altitude bug is right there. Heading bug, we don't really need that right now because we're flying off our GPS CDI. Now, if I were to flip this, then we would start flying either on our VOR or uh, heading. Uh, once we get to Omaha, we're going to load an approach, and then we're not going to be using a GPS approach. We're going to be using ILS, and so you'll get to see how that works with the approach light. So we have heading right here if we want to fly on the heading bug. We have nav right here if we want to fly off our navigational system like VOR or uh, GPS, and we have approach if we have an ILS frequency pulled up, with that, which has both a glide slope, which will show up right here, and... Um, a CDI for uh, ILS and that'll all be on the approach section so those are things to look forward to in the future we are level at flight level 250 air is clear no clouds ahead of us so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the seatbelt sign at this time and with that being said this video is already like an hour long I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is break this up into three separate videos so that way you guys get the take off the climb then you get the cruise and then you also get the landing so I think that is probably what I am going to do anyway with that I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for you guys I don't do uh, pausing or flight acceleration when I'm playing FSX so I have to sit here the whole time and monitor the aircraft but if anything exciting happens or any changes happen I will be sure to bring you in otherwise enjoy the views and enjoy the flight everybody I am back as you can tell we are about uh, about two-thirds of the way through that second leg right there and we did get requested to push to 118.05 for Minneapolis Center so I'm gonna acknowledge that handoff and I'm gonna change again I could manually change my comm frequency down here but I am just gonna do it here because uh, it's a lot quicker and easier and it's just hard to if you don't have your fingers actually on the knobs it's hard to do so I'm just gonna kind of cheat a little bit hopefully you guys are okay with that now we're gonna contact Minneapolis. Uh, don't want to step on people. And they have radar contact with us. We're still on two nine or nine or two. We're still cruising. We look at our engine. Everything is going fine. I could even bump up that torque a little more if I want to try to get just a little more airspeed out of this thing not going to help us out too much but if we wanted to not do that we could conserve a little fuel because if we come down here uh we can see our fuel is right here uh gallons per hour is at 65 if i were to pull back this torque a little bit you can see how my gallons per hour is decreasing we're slowing down a little bit but we're going to conserve a little fuel so it's another option that you have available, whether you want to conserve fuel or you just want to get there fast. For me, I just want to get there fast because this is like a two hour flight and I don't, I, I just want to get there and then maybe do another flight right away. Who knows? Maybe I'll record two videos today and pump them out for you guys. Already they're having us contact Minneapolis Center again on a new frequency. So we'll go ahead and acknowledge that handoff. And we're gonna tune to it and contact them. Now it's good once you tune to it to usually listen a little while to make sure that you're not gonna be stepping on anybody. But I wasn't stepping on anybody. With that being said, you can see that we're getting close to KSTC. Uh, the further we zoom in, the more airports we uh, see. The 
more we zoom out, the less airports we're going to see. It's only going to be more major ones that we see, or bigger ones. But if we look... Uh, where do I want to go? Out our wing. I don't know if we'll see it out here. We're going to we're gonna do a magical flight through the window. Oh, now we're outside. And look down. And now we can start to see St. Cloud down there. St. Cloud is a beautiful city. If you like college hockey, home of the St. Cloud University, or University of St. Cloud, University of Minnesota St. Cloud. I don't know what it is. University of St. Cloud Huskies. Uh... Play the University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux a lot. Uh, they actually swept us last time, which was not good. But hopefully that we can beat them again uh, coming up here because we want to make the playoffs like we always do and be national champions again. We're only eight-time national champions. We need to be nine. We're... You can see St. Cloud Airport down there as well, which kind of coincides with our multifunctional display right there. So you can see that it's just off our nose and to the left, which is what was showing. Also, you can see that great ground speed of 364 knots because we have that beautiful 60 knot tailwind. Unfortunately, when we start heading west a little more, it's going to turn into more of a headwind for us. We're going to lose some of that ground speed, but at least we're getting to the Minneapolis area pretty darn quick on this second leg of our flight. Three passengers are wearing their seatbelt. One of them has them off. A nice thing about this aircraft is you can't see the passengers and you can't hear them talk. That's great. Unfortunately, there is no like sliding door to separate the uh, cockpit from the main cabin area, but it is what it is. If you want, you can even pull out this nice little table so they can play like checkers or uh, you know backgammon or something like that on that table. But we're gonna make sure that it's in the stowed position because I don't want to forget about that when we go into landing. And they're not real passengers anyway. Downside to this is we do not have any crew on board. So if I tried to serve them uh, food or something, you can see that we get that little beep beep and no crew aboard. Uh, we can't even play music, unfortunately. So no entertainment, no food, no drinks, but it's a fairly short flight. It's only two hours and it's kind of a private charter. Maybe if I was doing this, I would, you know, give them some soda or something if I, if I had soda you know reach back behind me and give them uh, here you guys go have a coke or a monster energy drink which i am drinking right now monster absolutely zero energy great drink maybe saying oh man that is so bad for you so unhealthy so terrible for your teeth well this is the low sugar one it's got zero calories i'm sure it's still terrible for your health but i don't drink coffee and you, you can see it's 11 35 uh local right now but I was up at 8, I think, and, you know, I, I don't drink coffee. I need a little, I need a little kickstart, and that's what we're using the Monster for. Anyway, I am probably going to pause this video again and bring you closer to Minneapolis so we can see Minneapolis and we can see us transition to the next leg of flight. So I hope you're enjoying the flight so far, and I will talk to you all in just a little bit. everybody I am back as you can see we are looking at our PFD and our multi-function display everything is still in the green we're still monitoring that our torque is good our RPM is good everything is looking nice and dandy we're not in the clouds you can also see that I zoomed in on our range here on the multi-function display and you can see that we're getting closer to that class class Bravo airspace airspace for MSP which is Minneapolis st. Paul the major airport there um, but we're going to be above the Class Bravo airspace. It only goes up to, uh, 
I, I never even looked at the chart to see what it goes up to, but it's not in the class Alpha airspace, so we are definitely good where we are. Also, we can see that we just flipped over to the pink, and so now the GPS, I never even commanded anything. It's automatically changing its course to maintain the GPS course that we have selected. So we're going to turn and intercept this next leg of travel. You can see we're in a right-hand turn because our horizon is up on the right side. And if we look up, you can see that we're turning right. Also, if we look out the window, you can see, uh, you would see our ailerons move as we start to uh, do our turn. So maybe I'll keep it here so once we start to level out, you'll be able to see those ailerons turn, which are some nice animations. We're also going to acknowledge our handoff, so we're going to go over to 133.7. And tune to Minneapolis Center. And here's where I would step on someone, so that's why you listen. And now we're going to contact them. You can see the ailerons just slightly moving as we're intercepting that. We're starting to dip that wing down, and you can see that I'm getting a little hit on my frame rate just because we're over a very congested uh, area uh, with a lot of city and a lot of clouds and just probably a beautiful view. Let's uh, do again our magical flight outside of our window. And look down at the beautiful city of Minneapolis. I'm going to close that ATC window. Uh, you can't see a whole lot of buildings, but you can tell that it's down there. You can see that it's development, not just square fields. There's a bunch of roads and highways and interstates and things like that. Uh, I believe the big MSP airport is back there. Fortunately, I can't see any of the skyline or anything like that. Oh, man, I'm moving so slowly. Let's uh, page down, try to get underneath our wing, just so you guys can get a nice little view. Weather is all below us, so that is also nice. Uh, you can see Minneapolis is down there. You can see some of the big buildings right here. MSP right there, which, if we look here, is going to kind of correlate with what we're seeing right there. Right off our left wing is slightly behind it, so that was KMSP, Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. We are on our new leg. We have, this leg is even longer than the last. If I go to the range and zoom out again, I'm going to have to zoom out a bunch and you can see how far we have to go. So it's about a third longer than that last leg we did, uh, which isn't too bad. Somewhere down here, uh, Minnesota, or Minnesota, Iowa, here's Nebraska and Omaha is right on the border basically. It's on the Nebraska side of the border between Nebraska and Iowa. But somewhere around here, we'll probably expect to start uh, getting our clearance for descent um, and then also our vectors to line up with the ILS, which I'm assuming is going to be runway 36. It might be 32, depending on if the winds or not have shifted. Uh, also, you can see all my heating is still off aside from the pedo heat, and that's just because uh, we're not in moisture. But if we start to fly into some clouds, uh, maybe these ones might be at our flight level, so we'll have to uh, keep an eye on those. If we start to go through some clouds, we'll either uh, request a higher IFR cruise or uh, descent, uh, we'll probably decrease it and maybe try to get below them if they are at our flight level. Try to request maybe uh, flight level 200. Uh, but if we do end up flying through those, that is one thing that we can uh, consider is turning on our heat for our windshield and prop wings. Oh, excuse me. And then maybe even our inertial set if we start to see uh, visible moisture in form of rain or snow. Uh, well, clouds are visible moisture, but bigger droplets, that is, that could get into our engine. So that's uh, another thing that we'll kind of pay attention to. Looks like we are going to be above these, so I'm probably going to keep at this uh, flight level for right now. Uh, maybe when I get closer down here, I'll request to go down to 200 so we can get a little bit longer of an en route descent, which is going to just help conserve some fuel, because when we're descending, we'll pull back our throttle a little bit uh, and then we can also get a little extra speed that way too so we can get some speed and save on gas all because we're using gravity which is uh, kind of a good thing to do with that being said 
I don't think there really is anything else to talk about right now. I don't have a let's learn topic or anything like that like I usually like to do, but I just wanted to, to fly this flight and get it pushed out for you. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please let me know in your comment section uh, if there's anything that you would like to see differently or if any changes or if I'm doing something wrong that I'm not uh, kind of realizing, please let me know. Uh, I would love to hear uh, what you would have to say about that. So please uh, like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy the flight a little more. Alright everybody, I am back. As you can see, we are now in Iowa. We have made our way into Iowa. We're past Minnesota. We're about a little over halfway done with this leg. Um, what I'm, I don't need to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to descend to flight level 200. I'm just going to show you how it's done in game in case you ever want to change your altitudes, whether it be because of weather or just because you want to, but this is how it's going to be done. So in our ATC window, uh, we don't have any instructions right now, so we could select a new IFR destination if we wanted to. We could cancel IFR and fly VFR if we wanted to. Not up here because in class alpha, class alpha, blah, blah, class alpha airspace, you need to be IFR. IFR, but what we're gonna do is request a cruising altitude decrease now when you do this you can't select the altitude you have to se select the altitude based on a decrease of your current altitude so for us we're gonna request flying 5,000 feet lower so once they're done talking to them we're gonna go ahead and do this but they're they're giving each other novels so we're gonna have to wait a second I apologize for that ah <sighs> All right, good read back. So we're gonna request cruising altitude decrease. Now, in order to do that, you can see that we request a decrease by a certain amount of feet. We're gonna request a decrease by 5,000 feet. After they say Roger. And now you can see how it requested flight level 200. So we got our request approved, so now we get to descend and maintain flight level 200. So I'm going to come over here to the autopilot and select 200, and then I could do the VVI, and right now we're at 700 feet a minute. We're going to increase that to, we're going to do 1,000 feet a minute on our descent. I'm going to turn on our passenger seatbelt sign for that just in case we end up running into turbulence or anything like that. We're just gonna make sure that the seatbelt sign is on for them. So you can see we have departed 250. We're gonna get down to, please expedite it. All right, so we'll expedite it. We'll do a 1500 feet per minute descent. We don't acknowledge that, we just expedite it. So we're descending at 1,500 feet per minute. Actually, it's looking like around 1,300 feet per minute. One thing we need to do is we can see that our airspeed is increasing. Uh, so we're going to have to maintain uh, not going too fast. So I'm actually going to pull back my torque a little bit, uh, not to get into the yellow. We could go into the yellow, but I don't want to. So we're going to make sure that we're just doing a nice, you know, lazy little descent here. Torque is down, and you can see also down here that our torque, or our pounds per gallon, is where did it go? Lost it now. Oh, it's covered up. Is at 56. So we're actually conserving a little bit of fuel by doing this as well. It's not going to be a whole lot. Uh, that's gallons per hour. So you know, I don't even know if we're going to conserve a gallon worth of fuel during this descent. It's 
you know, we're going to be done with it fairly quickly. So we're definitely not going to be conserving a whole lot, but it's something you can do. Sometimes uh, you can real world request uh, slower descent so you can actually descend a little slower and uh, keep your throttle back to maintain your airspeed and really conserve some fuel. Gonna hand over and we'll go ahead and tune to them and contact them. <clears throat> Got about 2,000 more feet left in our descent. There's no clouds around us, so I was perfectly okay uh, with doing that descent. We might end up going through a few clouds while we're getting vectored into final and descending through this altitude. I'm not sure what level they are at, but we might end up going through a few of them, so we're going to keep an eye on that. If we do end up going through some of them, we'll make sure that we turn on some of our heating and turn on the seatbelt sign like I had maintained or talked about earlier. Also, when we start our main descent, we're going to pull back away from that 850 mode and go back into flaps up. Going a little fast, so I'm going to pull back my torque even more uh, on my power lever. And you can see that hopefully we'll start to slow down. We definitely don't want to exceed this aircraft speed too much. So let's pull it back a little more. Now we're starting to slow down some, which is good. And you can also see right here that um, we're still maintaining that VSI. We're about 600 feet away from our requested altitude of flight level 200. Once we start to level out, I'll make sure to put in the torque again so we can get our power and our speed maintained. Starting to level out now, and you can see we're really starting to slow down because of that, so we'll go ahead and start to push in our power lever to get our torque back up. Try to get it back up to like that 117. Don't want to do it too fast. We don't want a big RPM increase, and we want to make sure that we're watching our ITT um, and all of our other instruments. Uh, engine readouts to make sure that we're not overspeeding the engine or stressing it too much. But that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do a descent. Uh, and it, the same holds true if you wanted to increase your altitude as well. Uh, you would request an altitude increase, so it would give you by a certain thousand amount of feet, uh, and then you would have to kind of do that math in your head. So I knew if I wanted to go from 250 to 200, it's only 5,000 feet. So pretty easy math. If you can't do that, I don't know how you would get through pilot training, to be honest. So hopefully you know that, and if you're a little kid, keep on studying your arithmetic, because it serves you later in life. I think what I'm going to do now is pause the video one more time. I'll show you a little more scenery, and probably around here I'll be bringing you back as we get our descent instructions and vectors into final for... K-O-M-A or Epley uh, in Omaha. everybody I am back as you can see we are getting some clearance right now we're gonna turn left heading 185 we're gonna expect vectors ILS runway one or three six approach so we're gonna start getting ready to do all of that 